right, welcome back. I'm Tiffany Calvert, Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent. And I'm Angie Hudnell, Registered Nurse for Purdue Farms. And today's lesson is how to manage stress. Mm. Um, and so we're going to talk <laughs> about ways to reduce stress, but then we're also going to give you some ideas on how to cope with stress because mm -hmm. stress is not like one of those things that we can just completely get rid of okay right. um of course there's negative stress and there's positive stress because mm -hmm. so we don't want to completely get rid of stress we want to still have those um celebrations birthday parties baby shower marriage whatever it is that's all considered positive stress mm -hmm. um and so when you feel stressed there's um you can feel angry really for no reason mm -hmm. um sometimes i can be short-tempered with my family not even really realizing i'm stressed yeah um confused just impatient um yeah. uh, sad worried about something or just worried for no reason you have a feeling of being worried but you really don't even realize what you're worrying about and then you also might have a headache you can actually feel like pain in your body right and it's different for everybody but stress can cause physical pain mm -hmm. um, I know um, I don't have a headache very often but I can tell in the upper part of my back once that area starts to hurt I know that a headache is coming on um, and it's simple it's tension in my muscles and it leads to a headache and I know it's from stress yeah. Um, it just is. Um, an upset stomach um, can also be a feeling. So um, what what are some ideas that you have? So um, when you feel stressed, you may, of course, you can forget things because you got so much going on. You know, you're rushing in the store and you forget the very thing that you came to the store to get. Yeah. Ever happened to you? It happened yes. to me many times. I yes. forgot the bread and the milk. Yeah. Yeah. So you forget. I've been to the point where I've picked up my phone to call somebody and then went on to do something else, and they're sitting there on the phone wondering why I haven't said hello. Please tell me you've done that, right? Uh, well, no. Okay. I'm sorry. And I've done it more than once. And when I go to miss you my cell phone, I have to find it quickly because um, in this position now, I've been here for um, going on six years, I have misplaced my phone and found it in the refrigerator, not once. <laughs> But like three or four times. Oh my gosh. In the refrigerator. In the refrigerator because you're so stressed out. You're doing a hundred exactly. things. Exactly. So when you start to do crazy stuff like that, it's time to take a stress check and do something about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So then uh, putting off doing the things you need to do. Yeah. Because yeah. you're so stressed out. Yeah. Because you know you have things to do, but then when you get home, you're like, oh. Uh, <laughs> I'll do laundry tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do exercise tomorrow, yep. this weekend maybe. Mm -hmm. I'll fix a healthy meal next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start working on my goals next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> yeah. Because there's too much. Yeah. Uh, rush around without getting much done. And yeah, you feel you're literally the, the chicken without the head cut off. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's definitely that. Been there. Um, sleep too little, too much, or both. Um, can't sleep because you got yeah. so much going on or mm -hmm. there's those that get depressed and are like shut out the world and they just sleep all the time mm -hmm. and they, you know I have people tell me all the time well I'm not really a morning person well what time did you get in bed okay that's the first question Absolutely. rest is important and we have to get a certain amount of hours of sleep and rest um, and even if you can't sleep for that long Rest and sleep sometimes is two different things. Mm -hmm. If you can't lay down on the bed and fully go to sleep, at least sit and do nothing. Yes. Okay? Or do something relaxing. Yes. Yeah. So at least you're rested. Yeah. I love that. Exactly. Um, and then there's those negative coping skills like we smoke or we drink alcohol mm -hmm. or we eat sweets. I know. And the reason why <laughs> she's looking at me is because um, I used to literally, um, and this is killing my soul to even admit <laughs> this, because I'm like so like on track now as far as nutrition, um, but I used to drink at least three milkshakes a day. Awesome. <laughs> um, because my brain needed that sugar. And the more sugar I consumed, the more that my uh, body craved it. And it was just, it was a way that I de-stressed. 
Um, but what I didn't realize is I was stressing myself out even more um, because I was physically harming my body with all that sugar. Um, you know, it was it was a really bad ad ad addiction. Um, when we would go out to eat, I would have to order my dessert first. Um, when I had a bad day or a good day, I always had to come home to the ice cream and mm. fix myself either a bowl of ice cream or a milkshake. Mm. I understand that. I pick yeah. up my daughter from, I can leave work, pick up my daughter from ball, whatever ball it is, run by Sonic and get me some ice cream. So Tiffany has been a lifesaver, introduced me to the smoothies. It yes. satisfies that craving. You get that sweet that you really want mm -hmm. and you're getting everything that's healthy. Yeah. So the dopamine levels oh, in the yeah, brain, yeah, yeah. Um, and when we fall into these bad habits, whether it's drinking or smoking or in any other drug, substance abuse, really, right, right. or your sugar addiction, um, you are, you know, and research says this, you are harming your dopamine levels in your brain, um, and your feel good. You know, mm -hmm. like um, your your brain naturally has a response to things that you enjoy that makes you think that I feel good mm -hmm. and I feel okay. Um, and then when you are replacing that with a, a negative habit like smoking or drinking or sugar, um, you are your brain will eventually stop producing as much dopamine. Um, and that's the reason why um, it's an avalanche for a substance abuse user or someone who overeats or mm -hmm. has an addiction to sugar is because the more that they have of that substance, the less dopamine their brain makes. And so then they just need more of that right. substance. So if you're taking a pain medication for something because it makes you feel good, yep. um, before you know it, you have to have two. Mm -hmm. And then two doesn't work, and you need more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that hits really hard. Yes, it does. Um, take too much medicine. Just talked about that. Yeah. Um, work too much. Um, well, I work at Purdue, and uh, we have a lot of workaholics there. They uh, come in early, and they leave late. Yeah. And I ask, how, much hour, how many hours of sleep did you have? Well, four. Mm -hmm. Four mm -hmm. hours of sleep is not good. Um, so I understand you want to get things done. And, you know, and that could be like stressors that you have at home that you are things that you're not wanting to deal with. Um, and, and, you know, people may be in, into a position where they actually need to go see a counselor or a professional therapist. And, um, and, and if you're in that position, I hope that you do that. Um, because you need to deal with those things. Right. You need to understand um, your body and prioritize things in order to be able to come to a restful place. Um, so, yeah. Um, of course, you may also make unhealthy choices about eating or drinking. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. tired. It's been a long day. Get home, grab a bag of chips and a soda pop, and you sit on the couch, mm -hmm. and you watch TV. Slack off on the fitness goals, obviously. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you don't feel good. I get that a lot. Uh, I don't feel good. When I get home mm -hmm. at 6, 37, I don't have time to exercise. And that's Yeah, same. it's just an avalanche. It's it like is. you it get is. stressed and overwhelmed, and then you go to make one bad decision that leads to another bad decision, and it's hard to get back on the train. I mean, I've heard people say, I fell off the wagon, and boy, when I fall off the wagon, I really fall <laughs> off the wagon. So I've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, of course, um, too much time watching, excuse me, <clears throat> TV videos or using the computer. Of course, we know. Um, the cell phones. My kids don't sit and watch TV anymore. Yeah. They're on their phones all the time and their faces in that. So it's like, hey, no phone time. You know, and I've noticed like being out on vacation, on the beach, there's literally people Facebooking on the beach. They're not um, enjoying their vacation. And, and let me clarify this. Like it's really important to capture the moment mm -hmm. and to take pictures yeah. so that you yeah. can always remember that. But there, there's a fine line between capturing the moment and not living in the moment. Um, and so just use caution, whether it's yourself that has a little bit more of a habit to be on your phone or your children, especially. Because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. want to be able for them to live in the moment, to be able to communicate with people around them. Um, you know, uh, we went to um, see the Ark last Friday. Oh, I and love it. Tons of people there, yes. right? Yes. But this inability to communicate with others is um, slowly fading away. Because, you know, I've noticed when you walk up to somebody now, you'll say, well, hey, how are you? And, you know, good. 
And that's just about the only response <laughs> you can get out of people today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, live in the moment, open your eyes, know uh, what your surroundings are, and I promise you that is a way to reduce some stress. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, other ways. Ask for help when you need it. Um, whether it be professional help or just a call, call a friend um, on some healthy dinner ideas. Call a friend for ideas on how to clean your house, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Angie was asking me earlier about um, decluttering, and it's just really you something. Know it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's really something that I've uh, went through just within the past um, year, and I had to phone a friend. I had to call somebody that I knew was an expert in it, and I knew that her house was. She is like the definition of a minimalist. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I knew who to call. Mm -hmm. um, she even has a label maker, and she makes labels for, like, drawers and cabinets and boxes, <laughs> and everything in her home has a place. Wow. Yes. Wow. And so I called her up. She come over, and the first thing that if you're interested in decluttering that you should do is to go to every room in your home, and when you walk into that room, whether it's a bedroom, a living room, a storage closet... You need to define that space purpose. I love like, that. what is this room's purpose? Um, and even if it doesn't have a purpose yet, you need to come up with one. It's that is the key. It needs a purpose. And once you've um, defined that purpose, what you can do is eliminate anything in that room that doesn't meet that purpose. Awesome. Okay. And so, and two, um, of course, I went through every room. I had a get rid of, a giveaway, a trash, and I had these large trash cans, basically, <laughs> that I just quickly, I looked at it, determined if I needed to keep it or not, and put it in its place. Um, and I still, to you this day... You got rid of it. You didn't let it lay, did you? No. Yeah, I you, sacked it up and gave it away. Got rid of it. I sold some stuff at consignment. Within a week, I made over $100. Oh, out of stuff that I didn't, I wasn't using. Yeah. And I was just going to, like, either throw it away or give it away. But yeah. consignment. Um, so a local consignment store would be something to definitely check out. Mm -hmm. But even today, after I've decluttered my home, I still have a trash can in the basement that I keep... And once, um, if I run across anything, it was just yesterday, I was doing laundry, I ran across this long sleeve shirt, which is warm weather now, and I'm thinking, my youngest is probably going to outgrow it before the fall, he really doesn't need it, he has enough shirts, so I th threw it in that trash can, not to throw it away, but to put it in that bag to do something with, to yes. give it away, to sell it at a consignment, there's no sense in storing it. Right. Um, I'm not a fan of yard sales, but if you want it to sack up stuff and store it away and then eventually have a yard sale, fine. But I like to just get rid of it then. Yeah. And what she really know. showed me is, like, I had two sets of silverware. <laughs> Since this lady came and helped me declutter my house, I've done less dishes and less laundry. Great ideas. Okay, Thanks. so declutter can de-stress your mm -hmm. life completely. Because you're not looking for what you need because there's exactly. all this clutter in there. And, and everything has a, a place. Mm. So if I think of, oh, okay, well, this toy needs AA batteries, there is one spot in my house where the batteries are located. Good. Good. It's good. such a good feeling. It makes morning time routines to get to go places easier. Um, like I said, less laundry and less dishes. That's like a miracle in itself. Right. Um, so other ways to reduce stress. Get enough sleep. Have fun. Live in the moment. If you do crazy stuff like you're, put, you're putting your cell phone in the refrigerator, you might as well laugh at it. That's right. Um, rather than cry that you've lost your mind, you might as well la laugh at yourself. That's right. Um, learn how to say no. Okay? Mm. If you are a workaholic, you need to let people know when you've reached your limit. Don't don't even get to your limit. Like, say no b before that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and even if you don't have a job, it might mean saying no to a birthday party. It might mean saying no to a family event. Mm -hmm. um, because what it boils down to is there's only so many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay? Um, we all have to sleep. 
and bathe and use the restroom and eat. <laughs> you got to make yeah. sure you have time for that. Yeah. Um, other things, know yourself and know your limits. You know, your limits may be different than my limits. Mm-hmm. Um, so we all require different things. Make a to-do list. I know uh, once I write it down, then that frees up space in my brain to move on. And you don't um, have to remember it. It's there. Exactly. I, I keep the list on our calendar. Yeah. Yeah, so make a to-do list. Um, remind yourself by using post-it notes. Um, if there's something that my kid needs for school the next day, it is a post-it note on the door as I'm going out. Mm-hmm. That way I'm sleeping good that night because I'm not worried, worried about, about, it. about it. Not worried about it, yeah. Um, set small, doable goals. When I decluttered my house, there were other things that I noticed needed to be done to my house. So I have a short-term goal list and a long-term goal list. Um, And solve problems when you come across them. Don't put problems on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Solve it right then, or at least make a plan on how you're going to solve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then take care of your body and your mind. So um, you and I both have stress. We've talked about it. Mm -hmm. How are some ways that you reduce stress? Um, My biggest thing is I gotta get my quiet time. my time yeah. to myself because I, I have to sit you. and let everything kind of settle mm-hmm. and when I let everything settle then my brain just kind of kind of takes care of what's more important and um, when you got so many things going on your brain will like give you all that stuff at once but if you just let and set it let everything settle it's kind of like with uh, the place I worked before we used um, jars and we put glitter in there and we check them up and then we just sit there and when the glitter just comes all the way down to the bottom it's settle let the dust settle that's you just got to sit in it when you sit in it then you can see what's important you can see what's most important Mm -hmm. and that's that's the biggest thing that I do I have to yeah sure um that quiet time is necessary I know um if I could just get uh, my goal is to get 15 minutes but literally if I can just get five minutes of getting up before everyone else in my house gets up especially the kids and have five to 15 minutes of sitting on my front porch or anywhere in my home where it's quiet and still. That way I can slowly think about my day. I can think about what needs to be done and it's just peaceful being still. Yes, it's really Um, important. And then I make my list of things to do. Um, And then the third thing that I like to do is I keep a gratitude journal. Ooh, and so yeah. when it really gets tough or sometimes we um, get stressed out about things that are really a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. No matter how stressed you are. But you may are, not see it first. Exactly. No matter how stressed you are, you can always find something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And it takes a little practice to Mm -hmm. like really get good at this. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you'll find yourself um, in a better place when you know that you can easily think of things to be thankful for. Even when um, you're having one of those days that from the minute you wake up, everything starts to go wrong. And it seems like, I mean, if we had a reset button, Mm -hmm. things would be a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, having a gratitude journal is important. I do, I'm like one almost on the fly kind of gratitude. You know, I'm looking for a place to park, and it's like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this parking spot that's really close to the door. (laughs) That's what I do. (laughs) Or it's, you know. (laughs) Or thank you for this long, peaceful walk. Yes. Or it's, uh, you know, it's it's raining. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the umbrellas that I remember to put in the car. I mean, it's that's exactly how I do. It's something that I'm thankful for. I say it right then and there. Yeah. So you hear me say it. I'm yeah. thanking Jesus for it. Yeah, just to say it out loud and <laughs> yes, to really realize yes, like yes. you can find something good. It is important. It is very important to yeah. give thanks. All right. So then um, healthy ways to cope. Um, count to 20 in your head. You know, if you're in the middle. Um, this is really important, like when you're with your children. I know they get... <laughs> Before make you, you start screaming. Before you start to speak. <laughs> and they've really made you mad. Stand there and count to 20. Yeah. <laughs> it really, really is helpful. So you can give yourself, because when you're, your first thing's out of your mouth, you really shouldn't say to your child. Yep. No, you really shouldn't. So give you time to think, uh, what do I need to say? I mean, they are a child, and they're learning things, and, and you want to say it in a 
the most appropriate way. Or even way. your coworkers. Yes, absolutely. Because you have to continue working with them, so it's really important to keep those first thoughts to yourself. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So count to 20. Yeah. Um, soothe yourself. You know, get a massage, take a hot bath, have a cup of herbal tea. I know you really like your teas. Yes, and then mm. just lavender, a lavender bath. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, or put on some calming music. I listen sometimes if I'm really stressed in the car um, or even at work. You know, we I will listen to um, some classical music. I don't know what it is. It just kind of, or, you know, the raining music or the ocean music or something like that. It's really, it does work. I mean, it works for me. Um, if I've got a lot of paperwork to put, put in, um, I get really, really stressed out, and then I'll put, you know, that on. And, sure. then, and then I can get it in, and not, I'm not thinking about other things. Um, give yourself a pep talk. Hey, I can do this. You know, I am worthy. You know, the, remember the Saturday Night Live? <laughs> He's like, and doggone it, I think people like me. <laughs> give yep. yourself that pep talk because you are worth it and you are worthy. Um, you know, you may think, oh, this person or that person doesn't like me. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. They don't give that value to you. You have the value yourself. Mm-hmm. Um Take time, some ways to relax, and you'll find them. Oh, it says right here. You'll find them in the box to the right. <laughs> um, <laughs> take time um, to relax. Of course, relax your muscles um, in a qu- dark, quiet room. What I always tell people at work is um, take about 15 minutes where nobody's going to be bothering you. If it's dark and quiet, mm-hmm. that's even better. But sometimes, honestly, some people only have 15 minutes in their car. Mm-hmm. And it might be before they come to work or after they leave work. And um, you just mm-hmm. close your eyes and you just relax. And, of course, you're just letting that sit still. You're letting the dust settle. And it really, really is helpful. Um, and then stretching. You know, we've got the new ladies in town that's doing the yoga. And Wellness yeah. Center has started another mm-hmm. yoga program yeah. so yoga is really really good mm-hmm. yeah and then of course um the massage um so what i tell people um when they go to try to relax is really from like start at the top of your head and work your way through like thinking about your different body parts and um because you'll try to relax mm-hmm and then if you really think about it, your jaw will still be mm-hmm. tense or yeah. your shoulders will be mm-hmm. tense mm-hmm. or your legs won't be completely relaxed or your gut will be tight and it won't be relaxed. Um, so it's really just move from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Think about fingers, toes, the whole nine yards and try to relax each body part. Because relaxing is, and especially for some people, it's not something that you can just do. No. Um, it takes time. It mm-hmm. takes time. Yeah. They have some great apps um, to do just exactly what she was talking about. Um, it's just like meditation. You can plug the phones in, you know, the earphones yeah, in. Yeah, they have an app for just about anything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he'll talk you right through it. You know, close yeah. your eyes. You know, yeah. relax your... Yeah. So, um, that's kind of what I wanted to end with today. Something similar, not completely the same, but with some mindful breathing. Uh Um, And so, if you really think about it, in our go, rush, rush, go, do world, um, there are several days that go by where I don't do any mindful breathing. I go all day long and I'm like, if somebody asks me how many times or did you even breathe, I'm like, (laughs) probably not. Yeah. You know, obviously I'm breathing because I'm alive, but I don't concentrate on it. And so Mm -hmm. research is actually showing mindful breathing is going to help you to um, not only reduce your stress, but it can physically reduce pain. Um, And so, because we know that stress can cause pain. So Um, what is this mindful breathing? Come on, explain this to me now. It's actually just drawing attention to your breath. Um, and it, it, I would suggest doing this first thing in the morning because, you know, we really don't breathe deeply enough and there are health benefits that go. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to suggest that you do, if you don't, if you're watching this video and it's not the appropriate place or time, come back to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're like driving a vehicle or trying to listen to us. Don't close your eyes, whatever you do. Um, But what I want you to do is to find um, a comfortable position. And some people's comfort may be laying down, either sitting up or reclining. But to close your eyes, 
um, and focus on um, yourself. So, and that's not a quick thing to do either. Mm -hmm. You really need to draw that chalkboard in your mind and whatever is on your mind right now, picture yourself writing it down. And if it's important, then we're gonna take care of it. If it's mm -hmm. not, just put it out of your mind. Okay, so this is gonna be like 15 minutes to yourself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how to do this but really you need to make a habit of it in your own time. So after you find a comfortable position, what you're gonna do is to allow your muscles to relax. Um, draw special attention to your neck, your shoulders, your jaw, your face, and your back. These are areas that often stay tense without us even realizing it. Take a few deep breaths, paying attention to this, the physical sensation of breathing, okay? And um, notice the pause at the end of your breath, okay? Without prolonging that pause or thinking about it, experience its calmness. Instantly, when we take a deep breath we, and we let that breath out, all of a sudden we feel calm and more relaxed and that is just with one deep breath and here's where most people um, don't realize it's really important to shift your attention to your stomach um, when we think of breathing we think about breathing from our lungs okay but the reality of it is our diaphragm is what we need to be focusing on. So we need to focus on belly breathing. So picture an infant sleeping. Okay, when we see an infant sleeping, we notice that they're breathing because their stomach is rising and falling. So that's what I want you to picture. And that's what I want you to do. Every time you inhale, your stomach should rise. And every time you exhale, it should fall. So this actually um, is gonna stimulate your rest and even your digestion, okay? And so um, this is kind of like our, our, our same um, synthetic is our fight or flight impulses that mm -hmm. we have naturally. Um, and so you just continue that for about 15 minutes or so and then finally at the end you should feel physically relaxed okay mm -hmm. if you don't you need to um, either do this longer or go back to concentrating on the areas your body parts that may still be tense and you don't realize it so 15 to 20 minutes of this really every day would be nice very nice um, but if you're not able to do that every day, um, I would at least try to do it, you know, three to five times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and just you going over this, I'm feeling calmer. Yeah, <laughs> just talking slower yeah. and just really like just breathing, just mm -hmm. breathe. Um, and if we're concentrating on our breathing, then we're not concentrating on everything else we have to do. Um, and finding that quiet time is going to be your biggest challenge, especially if you have, if you have children or somebody else you're taking care of. But it's kind of like the idea when a plane goes to crash, if you don't put your ox oxygen mask on first, then you're not going to be able to save anybody else. That's right. And so as a mom, as a wife, as a father, whatever your role is in this world, you are not going to be able to do a good job at it unless you take care of yourself first. That is so true. And so um, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson today, and I hope that you can try this mindful breathing. It may, if you've never done this before, it may seem awkward or a little silly at first just to um, sit still and breathe, mm -hmm. but I promise you if you try it, um, Makes a difference. It's going to relax you, and you're going to want to do it more often. So thank you.